Okay, sorry, ran out of memory card space again. I've got to start buying larger memory cards. But what I was doing last was uh, putting some tone on the lips here. Actually, no, actually, no, I wasn't. I was kind of fixing the eyeball. So there you go. Now she looks a little bit better, not by much, but there we go. Put a little bit more tone on that side of the eye. Kind of make it, give it the depth. And then put a tone underneath the eyelid here. There we go. Ah, perfect. It looks like that I made the bottom of her iris a little bit too dark. So a good way is you pick your kneaded eraser and instead of wiping, like as an actual racing, I'm just gonna dab it. What I do is I like to go like this, just roll it. So I'm gonna do that right now. Actually, I'm gonna reshape my eraser a little bit. So roll it. Basically what, what I'm doing is I'm just lifting some of the tone right off the page. So there you go, it lightens the eye a little bit. I'm gonna come in here and just blend it in again. There we go. Actually, your pupil's kind of freaking me out. So if I can correct it a little bit here. Give it a little bit more tone. Same with this one. Most of the time, when I'm uh, using this um, using this uh, blending stump, I tend to rub away most of my other details. There we go. Coming in here for a second pass with the uh, blending stump here. Get some more tone to go through. Now, this is just basically a gradual change. Had I done this at a time lapse, you would see the change, um, you know, as I'm doing this. It's kind of lighter here, so I'll just leave that alone here. bit of overlap in the in the graphite here so I'm gonna pick some of it up here. There you go. Oops. Come here fill in the fill in the gaps again. So well, you can do this without doing the blending stuff as well. I'm just really lazy at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, people. Makes my blending a little bit easier. But the, of course, if you're going to use a blending stuff, make sure you always, always adjust the pressure. Um, you know, harder you push, you know, the more, more of a darker spot you're going to get as you're rubbing along. Plus, you might be moving a little bit too much uh, graphite or charcoal or whatever you're using it for, um, and then. Uh, you have to, you know, go in and correct it.
<laughs> Excuse me. So let's finally get into this cheek area here. Okay, so I grab this here. Going little tiny circles here. Right now I'm kind of just smudging everything into into one tone. Later on I'll put a little bit more tone on on the bottom of the jawline. I kind of um, separate the two here. But you don't want this to be an actual line though, so make sure you do blend in a little bit. Let the, let the dark tone underneath their jaw bring out, shape and bring out the jaw itself. So. Sometimes you gotta turn your whole body in order to get the right angle to do to do what you want. So, or you turn the whole page if you want. I usually like to turn my body more, just because uh, you can always leave your picture upright and be able to stand back and just kind of take a quick look at it, see how well you did, how accurate you were. So it's very it's very important to stop occasionally and step back to make sure that you're going in the right direction. What your what your uh, what your piece. All right, so let me step back really quick here. Looks like a shadow on the bottom of her chin. Gonna need adjusting, but let's see. I'm gonna start blending a little bit more in here. This actually upper cheek, her uh, this area here is actually considerably darker than the bottom area here. So uh, apply a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna rub in a little bit more graphite here, and then as I get down here, all I'm gonna do is just uh, not apply as much pressure as I did above here. So there you go. So now from all that rubbing, I obviously killed the tone underneath her shin, so. I'm gonna draw some more. There we go. Basically watching her chin and her jawline take shape here. It's quite a bit darker here. 